G'day everyone, and welcome to our third trip video for Intense Off-Road, here on our YouTube channel. In this episode, we're heading to the Moore River area, which is in Western Australia, around 130 kilometres north of the Perth city. Where you can and can't drive is a bit of a grey area around Moore River, so our mission is to drive the river from the north to as far south as possible without intruding on private property. All the way along we'll be logging and mapping our journey, so that you can go to intenseoffroad.com and download all you need to plan your own trip. Now you might be interested to know who's on board for this video. You might recognise the Black Prado from video number 2, White Hills, and that is Dylan's Prado. He has his partner Marnie along in the car this time. In the Silver Navarra we have Dylan's brother Bo, and his partner Naomi, or Gnomes as we call her. And in the patrol we have of course myself, my wife Alana, and my younger brother Jake and his partner Hayley riding in the back. Alright, so this is where we all begin. We've got uh, the Moore River State Forest here and farming land out over pretty much the other side of the river. We've come across what I didn't expect is a lot of uh, fences. Obviously people have been going where they shouldn't have on private land. So it's very fenced off along here. But uh, fortunately the fire break coming along there is very good. So we followed the fire break to this point. It goes down quite a decent sort of hill climb here. Um, we had a fallen down tree down there as well, which took about three minutes to clear with little hatchets and everything. So uh, should just be a couple of hundred metres down that hill and we'll be by the side of the river. It's got to be an easier way. Bo, there are so many tools better than a machete for letting your tyres down, man. Okay, so I've got two ways I let my tyres down. Uh, it depends on the situation. Uh, sometimes I use these Storm tyre deflators. Come in these little leather pouch. Set you back about $80 for four of them. And they're these little brass things here. Now all you do with these is you, uh, they come preset to 18 PSI, but you can adjust them to whatever pressure you like. And once you've set them to your pressure, you just screw them onto your, onto your uh, tyre valve there, and uh, they'll just let it down to whatever you set them to. Uh, I set mine for beach pressures, which is a bit too low for uh, this sort of work, so I'm actually going to use the ARB tyre deflator today, which is a manual one. Okay, so instead of using the Storms, I'm using the ARB Easy Deflator. The same as every other type of deflator on the market. I don't know who copied who, but uh, this one works by actually removing the valve core. So you have to do it manually, but it doesn't take long because it removes the valve core. So you screw one thread on, straight over the top of the valve. The second thread latches in, removes the valve core. Then you just watch your gauge, let the air out. So about 22 in the rear today, because I've got a fair bit of weight in the patrol this time around. I might do about 20 in the front. Having dropped some pressure from the tyres, we headed straight down the hill in hopes of finding a nice spot by the river to have some lunch. So we found the Moor River at the bottom of that hill and stopped for lunch. The water is ankle deep at the very most. Although looking at how high Jake rolls his trousers up, he obviously reckons there's more here than meets the eye. And then Bo found one of those skimboard things lying in the river just downstream. 
We had no idea just how much use we would get out of that thing this weekend. Now you see that thing there? That is a tick. I hate ticks. Already, there was two ticks. Two ticks. Well, I got my tick protection. <laughs> this place is known for its ticks in summer. Why do we have to come here in summer? <laughs> and there's ticks. Wait, did ticks live on the beach? They yeah. live everywhere though. They'll swim out to the water to get in. <laughs> Once we discovered that tick infestation, we had no desire to stick around. But the hill we came down was deceptive, and we could not get back up. We'll end up sitting on this hill sideways, or something stupid, for a whole afternoon trying to get a vehicle out. So, I think we'll go downstream. Okay. We're gonna go downstream, Dylan. Momentum might get you over one of them, and then you'll be stuck on the next one. Yeah, and they're boggy too. Yeah. Get Jake out to check if it's boggy. Check nice. it out, check if it's boggy. Should be right. Jake, it's gonna be boggy. You have to walk it. Jake's gonna walk it. Okay. Woo! Crossing the river isn't something I really want to do, especially not driving down it. A lot of people do, but I'd avoid it if I could. Mm. So we couldn't get back up our hills, so sort of making our way down to try and find another exit. What do you make of it, Jake? The light sand is boggy. The light sand is boggy? Yeah. So the light sand, is, it's about five centimetres boggy, then it goes firm. But that's with 60 kilos of Jake, not two tonnes of car. Head down there, across that island, and travel down river. I can see an exit just over there. I was driving along, following Alex. Oh, I thought I was following Alex, maybe I wasn't. And then all of a sudden I went too far left and it went <laughs> straight in the drank. Aww. Looks pretty bad, eh? Now, I'm not afraid to admit, I was a little worried about this one. There's a lot of suction in that sand. A nice slow pull with a winch would have been perfect, but none of us has a winch. So it was just going to have to be a snatch recovery, but with that much suction, the forces at play during a snatch recovery would be far too dangerous without some digging. Yeah, we're going to have to jack it up, man. It's just sucked right down into that mud, hey. The rear wheel's completely gone. Um, you remember you found that, that kid's knee board thing earlier? Yeah. Yeah, we're going to have to sacrifice no, the knee board. I love the knee board. That yeah. was a good addition to the family. I know, it was good. <laughs> it's going to have to be used as a jack base because the jack will just sink. Alright. I've learned in the course of a few recoveries over the years that there's a lot of value in the prep work you do. Digging around the wheels, laying down a track of vegetation, max tracks, logs, rocks, anything to get you that extra bit of traction and hopefully get you out. There's no point just going gung-ho trying to pull the vehicle out only to have it sink again 10 metres later. Um, Dylan, you just give the, the ready message and uh, I'll just yell stop if anything looks bad.
lots of suction in that mud. Took about three lifts with the high lift. The wheel was under the sand. We had to dig, dig to get the wheel, to get the high lift on it, to lift the wheel out of the mud, put stuff under it, and lift it again. I'm stuffed. <laughs> Yeah, that went pretty well, really well. Pool, it? Yeah, it was, yeah. As soon as we got that suction out, it was easy to go. Don't drive down the river if you can avoid it. <laughs> <laughs> you happy with the way that went? I'd be much happier if it didn't get stuck in the <laughs> first place. <laughs> While it may not have looked like it, that recovery cost us a lot of time. We still had a fair way to go to make camp for the night, and I knew we were likely to encounter private property and fences again, so we were all glad to find ourselves a decent forestry track to follow. Nothing this good can last forever though, and soon enough we were trapped in by a maze of fences. Time to break out our secret weapon. This is what I do when I don't know an area very well, such as this one, and I've taken Google Earth screenshots. Um, you can see little bits like here, and here I've dropped waypoints at points of interest or spots that I think might be an issue to get around and that sort of thing. Um, I've converted them from Google Earth format, so the same things are here on my GPS, but then if I need to I can refer back to the Google images I've printed off with all the little points dropped in. So we've encountered a lot of private property we're trying to work our way around at the moment. So we're about halfway between those two, a point where I've marked follow this south. We might even be at that spot there by looking it's quite cleared out. Yeah. We need to get to there, so we've gone around. If we can go down here and follow the fence line, that's probably that straight line there. Oh yeah, and go behind it. I think go that way. Is that the spot you wanted to go camping at? No, this, no. that's the first spot that might be possible. For oh, camping. possible camping. So it's not that far away. Yeah, yeah we've just got to find our way around and try and follow the river. Cool. Anyway, it turns out you can't take everything Google says too literally. On paper, it appeared to lead us exactly where we wanted to go. In reality, it got tighter and tighter. In my defence though, it did have a road name, even if it was just painted on an old tyre. Those Navara's paint didn't look too bad before this. Leaves much to be desired now though. As for my paint, well, mine's beyond repair and I don't really care about that. I was more worried about the ticks sitting on those bushes and coming in through my windows. So it was all the windows up in my car. And that's not fun when the air condition is busted and it's 40 degrees outside. Sometimes when I'm on these tight tracks, I just get this overwhelming manly desire to hop out and machete everything I see. Sometimes I don't even hop out and in that instance I've just hung out the window and chopped it up. It's not a very effective method, but, you know, I've got to get it out of my system. All the way along this piece of track, we'd been saying to each other, should we turn around? Should we go back? Should we push on? Eventually it reached the point where it started to look like a walking track. That's when we called it after a couple of kilometres and turned it back around. Got to say one thing for it though. The flowers and the greenery out here are amazing. We saw some brilliant Banksia flowers, and whatever those little pink things are, they're awesome. Finally we found a decent spot for a camp, but all was not entirely well. Yeah, we have to, we have to go down to the river, there's too many ants at this spot. Mm -hmm. So, we choose between ticks, leeches and mozzies, or ticks, leeches, and ants. We finally found a beautiful camp spot perched just above the river. 
with no ants and no broken glass. You don't actually own any camping accommodation, is that right? It is right. Damn, so you're rigging your snatch strap up between the tree and the ute. Yep, and I'm going to put a tarp over it, yep. and then we're going to sleep on those wet mattresses. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. Beautiful work. The ticks were still a problem, but not anywhere near the same extent as they were where we had lunch. The rooftop tent is great. Comfortable, especially good in wet weather, as you can stay up out of the mud. But everybody is right when they say it's a hassle packing them up every time you want to move your vehicle. I'm definitely not the type of guy that likes to sit around camp and not move for days at a time. I have to get out and explore. A lot of the time I'll just use my swag and leave the tent packed up on the roof. Unless Alana's along to help me out. How's it going? Good. We've just set up camp at Moore River and as you can see, it's not flowing that well. So it looks like we're going to need more river. <laughs> this is so funny. Okay. okay. So aside from there not being enough river, um, some of the shit that happened today. Well, Bo didn't start off too well when he found out there's ticks at Moore River. Oh. <laughs> yeah. How was that? I don't know if we got any film of Bo screaming like a girl and running <laughs> into a tree. Yeah, he did. He did. Yeah, yeah did all it? the women had to protect him from the ticks. Oh. <laughs> I got my tick knife. <laughs> no, you had the bigger one. You had the machine. Yeah, it's over there, near my bed. <laughs> oh, no, tell, no. Them, tell them how big the ticks are, though. Well, the ticks are about the size Dogs. of a camel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, they are. But really, like generally, they might be the size of a pinhead, but these ones are like the size of a pinky fingernail. So they're pretty big, and that's a male tick too. We had to go along the river and, and duck through in a few spots. But, no, um, we made that mistake yeah, yeah, yeah. of going downstream and not testing the, the full walk the whole way. See, 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 and then Dylan happened. How did you feel, Dylan? Um, I, was feel, I was feeling pretty confident at the beginning, going through it, following Alex. I was like, you know what? <laughs> I don't need Alex. I don't need Alex. I'm going to go off on my own. I'm and a then, strong independent woman. Yeah. <laughs> and then um, I just stopped immediately. I nearly got whiplash in how fast I stopped. Really? <laughs> yeah, it was just like, boom! <laughs> and then um, I got out the car and assessed the damage, and it was pretty poor. It was just... It was, it was pretty bogged. It was pretty bogged. <laughs> like, you know, you see some people that, and they say, oh yeah, I got bogged on the weekend. That's, it's a lot more than that. Yeah. Wait, cut to the bog photo. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta add that in. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, no one's gonna get it. <laughs> so that's how bogged we're talking. Yeah. <laughs> pretty bogged, in case you don't remember it from probably 10 minutes ago. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and um, anyway, we got out and had a look and assessed the damage. And it was getting it was getting deeper by the minute. It was getting more and more deeper in the, in the sinkhole. So um, it was up to my. You could see my rim at the beginning, and then it was at the top of my tire. Yeah. When we were trying to get it out. Yeah. But wait, what saved the day? What did save the day? Who knows? Someone knows. Yeah, Nissan saved the day. Yeah. Was it? And yeah, my car. Nissan. The absolute. Yeah, best thing isn't. ever, the best high-lift jack base that we found Mambo. in the river. <laughs> That's it for the night. We're going to have some fun. So this is the creation of beer pancakes. I found a recipe on the internet for these, and I kind of tore it down to the idea of just using beer instead of milk in a pancake mix. I chose a cheap and nasty pancake mix in the hopes that it would have no flavour and we could add our own touch to it. At this point, 
We've only put uh, some pine nuts, some currants, and a whole bottle of beer in there. You have to crack the cap every now and then to release the pressure, because we all know what happens when you shake a beer. <laughs> Jay, you know how to get all the hard stuff off, don't you? Yeah, boys. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pro. Wait, what, 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 what? I did. Yeah. There it is guys, beer pancakes and bacon. You probably don't need a recipe to make it, but if you do, just go to intenseoffroad.com and search beer pancakes. How do we know it's good? Jake's vacant grin says it all. Anyway, enough of this tomfoolery, we've got some exploring to do. Or at least we thought we did. Turns out the river becomes mostly private property, only a few hundred metres south of where we camped. So, um, all of the tracks I've marked out seem to be mostly private property. We came down the river the furthest we could. And then we've just been skirting along the uh, side of the National Park or uh, State Forest. Uh, it's pretty overgrown and everything. We've come to this spot here. And when I looked on maps and everything, it looked like we'd be able to access the river, but it looks like it's all private property and gated off. I know, bit of an anticlimactic ending. From there, it was honestly just a couple of straight, flat dirt roads and we were back out on the highway. Anyway, I thought I'd leave you with a few pictures from the trip while I just talk about a few things for a moment. First of all, I want to say thanks to those of you who've subscribed and given me some support and positive comments over the last couple of months. It's definitely inspired me to make more videos and I hope you enjoy them. You're all bloody legends. If you're not a subscriber and you've just uh, stumbled across us here, then why not click the subscribe button and you can obtain the bloody legend status as well. I've also got a full write-up on the trip and plenty more images on intenseoffroad.com. If you want to learn a bit more or you want to plan your own trip to the area, head over there and subscribe to my email list. From there, you'll get a password to the Downloads section, where you can download all the waypoints, tracks and Google image files of where we went. This marks the end of the More River section, but it doesn't mark the end of our weekend. Don't miss the next episode where we follow the beach from Gilderton to Seabird. You won't believe how bad a situation we get ourselves in on that beach. <laughs>